All right, guys, we ready? It's, uh, it's Monday, but I guess it's uh, really Wednesday, right? Uh, tomorrow's Tuesday, but it's really Thursday. It's kind, of, it's kind of a different week, you know. It's hard to really kind of think what day it is. Um, you know, probably a good thing for us. You know, probably a good thing. As, as difficult as it is to, you know, prepare for a Boise, uh, obviously on a short week on a Thursday night, uh, you know, coming off the game Saturday night, uh, it's probably good to get right back to it. Uh, you know, the coaches, as coaches do, were in at 7 o'clock Sunday morning. Uh, I think the defensive coaches got out of there at 1 o'clock last night. Uh, we were back in this morning at 6.30, uh, practiced. So we're moving on. Um, you know, you guys know Boise as well as I know Boise. Um, very, very difficult team to, to beat no matter where you play them, but uh, obviously playing them at home. I don't think they've lost since the last time we were up there at home. I think that's, is that right? Air Force, Air Force beat them the next week. And they've gone seven and zero since then. Um, you know, as always, a very sound, schematic defense. Uh, I thought they played very well against Washington State. Also, Troy. If you go back, Troy's a good football team, an explosive offense. So they've got two good games under their belt defensively, uh, offensively. Um, you know, a little different than the teams we've played. You know, we've played more of the. Uh, you know, throw it 60 times, both teams, a little more multiple tight ends. Uh, we'll try to run the football, obviously, depending on what quarterback's in there. Uh, the other quarterback, Kozert, uh, there's actually quarterback called runs for him. Uh, their passing game's pretty much the same, regardless of which player's in there at quarterback. The run game is a little different because of the predetermined uh, quarterback runs. Uh, so it's a big challenge. Uh, you know, we're pretty healthy. Stanley Barnwell has an ankle um, that he, you know, he sprained the other ankle in camp. Now he's got a different ankle. He'll probably be a game time game time decision. Uh, other than that, uh, you know, we're, we're pretty good health wise. Uh, looking forward to the opportunity. You know, just the, I believe this is the only college football game on Thursday night. Um, I think there's an NFL game on. I think Houston Texans are playing somewhere Thursday night, if I'm not mistaken. Do you guys know that? Cincinnati. They're playing at Cincinnati, and I just heard J.J. Watt yesterday. I guess they got beat at home to Jacksonville uh, in an emotional game, and J.J. Watt talking about how good it is to go play a game Thursday night. You know, so there they are. There they are, an NFL team that played Sunday, uh, lost the game, and they go play Thursday night on the road, uh, and that's what this is now. You know, we've we've got to execute. We have to play better. Uh, and that's um, that. That's the case. Okay, Rick. Uh, you said many times before that Lamar's a guy that uh, takes things to heart. Uh, where, from your standpoint, where is he at uh, two days later after being pulled from it? Yeah, it's um, you know, you know, I've talked to him just a little bit because I don't want to complicate things. It really comes down to just playing better. Uh, I, I thought he handled things well you know he was he was good on the sidelines uh, he was very excited almost too excited when we scored that last touchdown to get between get within two you know he ran out there on the field and I was holding my breath you know that they wouldn't call a penalty on that uh, but I think he, he you know he needs to play better he, he obviously has a lot invested in this he's worked hard uh, he's had a very good spring and a very good training camp and then um, uh, and then, you know, he hasn't played his best in these first two games. Uh, you, you know, it, it may be like we are on offense a little bit with the running backs in that we're, you know, we're trying every play to be a home run. You know, we're trying every play to make something happen. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's not happening right now for us. So, you know, I think he's good. I'm not going to overcomplicate it. He's our quarterback. Uh, he, he just needs to play better. But... He, he's like we are as a team. We, we all need to play better. On a Thursday game, um, what do you lose during the week? What what makes it the most difficult to prepare for? Well, Monday's like Wednesday. <laughs> you, know, you think about Sunday, the day after you've played a game is a Tuesday. You know, normally Tuesday and Wednesday are your two heavy days, full pads. So that was really Sunday and today. You know, tomorrow's like Thursday. I mean, obviously, the schedule didn't pop up here within the last week or two. Uh, 
Uh, you know, Boise has probably spent a lot of time on us. Uh, we spent some time on Boise. You know, but it's really about now, um, you know, your body of work. You know, you're not going to do that much different doing, during a week uh, to make your team that much better right now. You know, we did have an extra week of training camp, as Boise did. Uh, we've known, both of us, that the other team was on the schedule. Uh, we're both coming off losses. Uh, obviously, they had a very difficult loss. So, you know, the bottom line is it's the same for both teams, that cliche. So probably the players are excited because they don't have to practice as much, you know, to be quite honest. So, you know, I, I think you can make it a little bigger than it is. I've played in several of these. You know, when I was at Texas A&M, we played Texas on Thanksgiving night quite a few times or the night before Thanksgiving. What, what day is Thanksgiving on, a Thursday or Friday? Thursday or Friday in there. So, um, you know, it's 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 uh, – it's really hard on the coaches and the players because you don't get that day off. You know, you come back from a Saturday game and you're back at it Sunday. There's, there's no other way to do it. Do you like having an early Mountain West game? Like that? I mean, I mean, you've done it before, but, but it's Boise and it's just in this early in the season. Uh, exactly like I wanted to script it. You know, I, I wanted to go to Boise, the first Mountain West Conference game, just see how good we are. You know, and what really, really makes it a great challenge is we lost in New Mexico State. So we've got the script exactly like we wanted it. <laughs> no, it's, um, you know, you don't really worry too much about the things you can't control. You know, it really is uh, kind of just put those blinders on. Don't look back. Don't look forward and just focus on this. You know, we have to play them at some point. We have to play them at some point. So, um, and that's the way I looked at it when we found out it was, uh, Thursday night. You know, I, I don't think that two more days preparation is going to change the whole body of work, the whole thing that Boise's put into that program. Two more days of practice isn't going to make us on an equal playing field with them anyhow, quite honestly. You know, we're going to go in there as the underdog and we're going to try to play our butt off and two more days isn't going to change the landscape a whole lot if we're perfectly honest. Just be in the coach. I'm sorry. Henry, go ahead. The end of the game, just the, the whole surge of here come the Lobos <laughs> the other night. Rather than take the loom and gloom of what we saw, oh, we got beat by the Aggies, all that crap. There's something that took place within your team in that second half, and then you, if you get the two-point conversion, if that game's five minutes longer, you beat them. There was something in the way you're playing, the emotion of your Lobos, it's got to be a carryover this week. What am I talking about? I'll tell you what, we, uh, I am proud of the fact it was bleak. I mean, it was 30 to 5, 30 to 5. You know, with all the expectations we had as a team, um, we scored 23 points in the fourth quarter. And we were on a roll right there. But I appreciate that. I appreciate the momentum that we had at the end. But the reality is, Henry, we never really had anything going consistently all night. You know, we came storming back. Uh, we had a red shirt freshman quarterback made some plays. We had a red shirt freshman wide receiver make some plays, Jay Griffin. Um, we, we made him punt, I think, six times in the second half. But you never felt like there was a consistency there. Um, you know, throughout the game. And that, that's what's so concerning. But again, I am appreciative that we're, we're strong enough as a program uh, to absorb that punch in the mouth. Uh, but it was a bad taste because we, 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 we didn't play very well. So I have mixed emotions. You know, I'm glad it finished the way it did. I'd have loved to have seen the game go into overtime. Um, did we deserve it to go into overtime? Probably not, probably not, because we didn't play well enough, quite honestly to be in that position at the end, if, if I'm looking at it totally objectively. You know, we turned the ball over four times. Uh, we had really six pre-snap type complications on offense. We had three post-snap penalties on offense. Um, you know, we gave up an 81-yard touchdown. It could have been an interception going the other way. Um, just too many things happened that I could leave there feeling like, boy, we're really buttoned up right now and we're heading in the right direction. I'd, I'd be kidding you if I tried to put just a totally positive spin on it. 
this game is Thursday night. You do have to move forward, and we've moved forward. But the consistency wasn't there. Um, the, the first half um, was bad. There's no way to sugarcoat it. It was bad. So, I mean, I have mixed emotions. You know, I'm concerned right now. I'm concerned right now about just overall if we can execute well enough. Um, are we good enough right now? Uh, you know, I, I'd love to put a silver lining on it and say, boy, we got a lot of comp competitive guys. We, we got the will to win. We, we, at the end of the game, we were rolling. We were still fragmented a little bit at the end of the game. You know, we didn't have a consistent thing going. You know, for us at the three yard line or, or the two point conversion, rather, uh, at the end of the game to have to throw it three times on two point conversions. Mm. Right? We had three two point conversions, we threw each one of them. Is that really us? You know, so, um, you know, I've got concerns right now, but I, I am moving on to the next one and we've got to get better. That, that's the bottom line. So I kind of went on there a long time about your question. I think it's a great question. There's always positives to take out of every game. Uh, we didn't collapse, but in the first half, we were poor. We were poor. Hey, Coach, uh, going into this game Thursday night, it's going to be important we put a rush on that pass. Are, are there any matchups we can take advantage of Boise State? Yeah, put um, some pressure on the quarterback? I mean, they're buttoned up. You know, they're, they're buttoned up protection-wise. Uh, you know, last year they, they did a number on us here with protection. Uh, the year before up there, uh, you know, we probably surprised them a little bit that we blitzed them as much as we blitzed them, uh, stayed after them. You know, Rippon's a year older now. Uh, they kind of know our style. Um, you know, they're, they're, you know, we're in a little unique deal. You know, we've played two teams that just get the ball out so fast. I mean, I don't know if I've ever played. We, we've had 60 passes in each of the first two games. I mean, just true get the ball out as fast as you can get it out kind of games. I think they're a little more pocket type passing. You know, they want to get the football down the field more, uh, but they're buttoned up. You know, you're not going to you're not going to create havoc on them schematically. So at some point, we are going to have to cover them. We're going to have to cover them. They have number one. You know, just like New Mexico State had number 16. Uh, so so you know that that's what it is. You know, I'd like to think we can cause some pressure. I'd like to think you know we can do some things, but. We're going to have to cover them because you, you're not going to get in that type of game with them where it's, they're going to let you hit the quarterback. Does being the only game on Thursday night against a team with that kind of national name recognition provide a little extra incentive for them moving forward? You know, I think it probably does. I think, um, you know, first of all, it's, it's difficult to stand here after we just lost a home game to a rival and really put it in perspective because we still have a bad taste in our mouth probably from Saturday night, big picture wise a little bit. But if you do step away and look at big picture, you know, to have this opportunity, uh, a New Mexico to go to a Boise, that ESPN would put this on as their only game, eight o'clock Eastern time kickoff. You know, they put some thought into that. They put some thought into that and, and I appreciate that. It's, it's great exposure for the program. But, you know, just like there were 32,000 fans here Saturday night, if you don't take advantage of that exposure, I don't know that you've really moved forward. And I think that's been the consistent thing is that, um, you know, we realized we had created some momentum in this program. It is a bit of a transition year, as I said, before we ever started. But you'd like to take advantage of the momentum that you've created. So it's another chance. It, it, it's another chance. And... Um, but I do feel appreciative that we have this opportunity to go up there. You know, I, I can't imagine a few years ago that ESPN would look at a New Mexico Boise game and say, boy, there's some intrigue in that. You know, the only intrigue in it is how many points is Boise going to score a few years ago. Um, and totally just watching Boise. You know, maybe somebody out there kind of likes to watch us, and I'm appreciative of that. When, so, when you looked at uh, Lily's kickoff return on film, uh, what did you see? I didn't think it was a hold. Uh, you know, we're turning it into the conference. Uh, you know, the kid kind of, the kid did a good job of, <laughs> you know, kind of selling it. The guy that threw it was 40 year, yards away that I told him at the time. I, I think you got to let that thing go right there. I mean, if you're going to call that, you're going <laughs> to, the flag's going to be on the ground all night. Uh, again, I don't want to, I probably shouldn't have said that, but you ask me and I'm honest and it's nothing different than I told, I saw it the whole way on the field. And I said it right then to the, to the guy that called it. Uh, I think I think you got to be looking hard to call that. It's a shame. Rippian, uh, since he got hurt, uh, 
um, and, his, and his street clothes. Are, are you, are you going to plan a little more for maybe Cozart uh, since, since he did have a concussion? I mean, do you put a little more into it? Because it looks like yeah. Cozart's much faster. Yeah. And uh, so I, I don't that's, know. That's a valid question. And, you know, I watched every snap of the, the Boise State at Washington State game. You know, I saw Rippon on the sideline. He looked very engaged. Uh, he was in street clothes, but, you know, he was smiling. He was talking to his teammates. I have no idea what the diagnosis was. Um, as I said, I think their passing game is exactly the same. It, it, it's exactly the same. The only difference is there's more predetermined quarterback runs for Cozart. Um, so you have a little more eye on that piece of it. So, you know, probably from the standpoint of predetermined quarterback runs, you spend more time on that if it's if it's Cozart, obviously. You know, Rippon's not that guy that they're going to do that with. Uh, he's more of the true, true pocket passer. But they both I, – I didn't notice any difference in the passing game. And I didn't notice any difference of them backing off in the passing game. You know, they were still trying, you know, late in that game, backed up kind of in an even game. I mean, they were going to take their shots and they were going to try to score. I mean, there, were, there was no, hope. hey, wait, we're being conservative right now. We got the backup quarterback in. You know, they're going to let it rip. And, you know, number one's still out there. You know, num number one's still out there running those routes. So that that's the real concern. The last question I had uh, was that Jordan – when you look at the stats at the end, I, I didn't realize that, and hopefully this never happens again, but he carried the ball four times for a minus eight yards. Uh, yeah. Darnett, he carries the ball 10, 12 times for 60, 70 yards. Right away, you know something's wrong. Like, I thought yeah. maybe because of the interception, because of the fumble, everything was going. That, uh, that number 74 kept, uh, I kept hearing number 74 quite a bit. Uh, for us? Yeah. Well, we had, he had one false start, yeah. yeah. We, he, we had two false starts, and one time we snapped it where we thought they jumped in the neutral zone, but they didn't. And then we had a delay of game, and we had a substitution penalty. So that's the six pre-snap penalties we had. Two false starts, um, um, a delay of game, a substitution penalty, and then we snapped it when they didn't jump offside. So we, we had our problems up in there, but it wasn't 74. Actually, Ray Baylor played pretty good. Uh, he did have one false start. I just uh, saw seeing that four yards from IAC, I thought, boy, you could just tell it wasn't in this game. Yeah, and you know, schematically, again, they, they did what they did the year before of running, particularly number 11, but the defensive ends up the field, taking the quarterback away. So the quarterback was either, either going to have to pitch it quick or give it. And that's that's really, you know, that's really how they defended us. And then we got off rhythm a little bit and got behind. You know, we fumbled the first series of the game. We drop another pitch in the first half. We throw an interception. We got behind and we 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 couldn't be patient enough to just hand it up in there, which I think we could have done. But they took Lamar away schematically, and then we had a couple sacks. You know, they've got some good pass rushers. You know, and they they they've picked up their their pressure package. But you're exactly right. You know, when you, when Lamar doesn't carry the ball, how do we beat you with Lamar? And that's that's where we are right now. But we've got answers for things. We just fell behind so fast that we were, you know, we were out of sync from the beginning. And credit to them, as I, as I said this morning on the radio show. And this will be the last thing I say about the game. When was it? Saturday night. But you know, it's not. You know, I'm not the one to get up here and just lament about all the things we didn't do. I think that's disrespectful to Mexico State. I, I've watched them from a distance, and, and um, they're a good football team. They're a good football team. Uh, did we play as well as we could? No. Did they beat us? Yeah, they beat us. It wasn't just us giving it to them. So, you know, congratulations to them, and um, let's move on to the next one. No, I think it's too soon. Uh, Greg, you know, we're, 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 I shouldn't even say too soon. It, it, it's not on the consideration point yet. You know, Lamar's body of work, what Lamar's done in camp, um, we're, we're not there yet. Now, did the freshman come in and play and show the things that we thought he was capable of? Yes. You know, he's a cool customer. He's got a quick release. He's got a good arm. He can run. Um, but. You know, Lamar's our guy. L Lamar's our guy. Coach, with that said, if, if, uh, if he was struggling, if he struggles in this next game, are you going to uh, 
do you, well, you're probably going to decide that one once the situation presents itself. If it does, if they take him away again, would you, how long does he have to like prove himself? Like yeah, I think that's, um, I think that's a fair question. And, and I think Lamar understands that as we all do. Uh, it won't be prematurely that we pull him out of the game. Uh, but if we're struggling like we were, and we've got to have a spark, we, we're going to make a change. I mean, it doesn't matter um, schematically we have to do something different, if we have to do something personnel-wise. I mean, you, you, can't, you, you, know, you can't keep going if it's not working. And that's just what football is. You know, talking about the Houston Texans yesterday, I didn't, you know, we're up here all day and I didn't see it, but it sounds like, uh, you know, they pulled the starter and put the, the, the Sean Watson in there. Um, that, that's, that's, that's what it is. That's what it is. Any update on uh, Kimmy when he's coming back? Kimmy still has uh, – there's a chance this week. There's a chance this week. Uh, hopefully Tulsa, you know, because he's from Tulsa. Uh, so he's, he's right there. He's close. Does them coming off triple overtime on a short week provide you guys any advantage in your mind? I don't think so. I, I really don't. Um, you know, anytime you win, there's obviously a little more momentum with it. But probably for coaches more than players, honestly, you know, players move on. They are so resilient. Uh, I, I don't think them getting home later than we did um, with us traveling the day earlier, you know, we could sit here and evaluate it all. Bottom line, when we kick it off, I don't think any of it matters. Okay, guys. All right. All right, thanks, guys.